I've written a total of 23 books. 23 20. Books. How do you even think of 23 books to write? How can I get my beard like yours? <laughs> well, you know, man. What's going on? Sometimes God bless you. Sometimes he's for you, man. You know, oh, man. be like old Martin with my mama bird. <laughs> <laughs> I was at that bank and looked and was like, I only got $11.37. Black Maybach, white seats, black piping. Remind me of Paul McCartney and Mike fighting. <laughs> You feel that? All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Maybach Conversations. And today we got one of the best, one of my friends from way back in the day, my, my man. man Marcus Rozier. How you doing today, brother? Man, phenomenal. I'm here with you. Oh, what, what, what can I say, man, to watch your journey, bro? I have to give you your flowers because I think sometimes people only document from yeah. the mountaintop, but they don't they don't let you see the whole process. So yeah, you have seen it way back in the yeah. day. <laughs> work, work ethic, man. For sure. So so this guy right here is an author, serial entrepreneur, CEO of multiple companies. He's spoken in how many places you've spoken? Man, I mean, 30 countries. 30 countries. Yeah. And, and what all the businesses you CEO of? You got your own media yeah. company? Yeah, so we've got a done for you media company that does everything from editing to SEO report, YouTube, social media. So we, we take care of that for people who yeah. know they need to create content for the purpose of getting leads and growing their business. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so that's Rain Media, that company. I love that one the most mm -hmm. because when I found out I was having a daughter, I started that for her. Nice. So my daughter's name is Rain, so that company's for her. Nice. Win the day marketing, uh, win the day marketing group. So that company is probably our largest and longest running. Mm -hmm. That's for it's an education company that provides done for you services, everything from creating your online programs, running your ads, setting up your email automation to follow up and get customers. So we help people specifically grow their entire online business with that company. Amazing, yep. man. That's amazing. So today, I'm glad I got you on the show. You're going to drop a lot of knowledge for us. I hope so. And, and we're going to pop a bottle to your success, man. <laughs> I just want to congratulate you for being a, a, bro a brother that's doing this thing, not out here caught up in the streets, and just being a blessing to others, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So what we sipping on? We got Bel Air Gold or Blue? Which Lord. one would you prefer? Hey, man, I'm always about gold. <laughs> All right, gold. <laughs> gold it is. I love gold, actually. That's my favorite. Uh-uh. So I just want to show my appreciation, uh, show my appreciation for brothers that's doing their thing, man. The purpose of me creating this show was to highlight young, or it doesn't matter if you're old, wealthy individuals who's making an impact in the community and being successful at doing what they do. Wow. You know, and I've known you for a minute. What we go back, like 10 years At now? least, at least, man, and just to see... To see your work ethic, man, I think sometimes people look at your success now or you know, I use air quotes for myself in terms of success because it's however you define that. Right. Which I got a whole definition of how I define wealth and success, but they will eliminate, man, the pr process, time, and work ethic. Yes, sir. All right. So, like, how do you get what you have? Well, be shit. Become that, become that person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> become that person. Man, I'm struggling with this damn bottle over here. Hey, man, it's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. You ain't supposed to open it up. It's a sign. <laughs> you like, hey, I, 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 oh, God. Hey, hey I can, it's happened on another hey, episode, listen. man. These damn Bel Air bottles. Hey, just don't bust the window, man. <laughs> Damn it. Mess around and bust it. Open that bottle and be like old Martin with my mama bird. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, 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 you know, Yo. my mama bird. <laughs> All right, guys. You know how important professional photography and videography is in real estate. And I take mine very seriously. The only company I trust is Visually Sold. And that's visuallysold.com. They have the best photographers. They've been shooting all of my photography videos for my real estate projects for years. Not only that, they have a next day delivery, instant booking online, and the quality is outstanding. Get your game up today and get 10% off your first photo or video shoot by using my code, which is Trey, T-R-E-Y, at visuallysold.com. And that is, again, Trey, at visuallysold.com they will take care of you make sure you tell them that i sent you so i can get some future discounts on all of my stuff in the future all right guys visuallysold.com check them out they will not disappoint one of the most professional services in the business all right i guarantee that now let's get back to the show 
All right, always struggling with these bottles, but man, congratulations to your success. Thank you, brother. Let's pop it, baby. Sheesh. Uh, so first, man, let me ask you, what started you on your journey of thank you, brother, motivational speaking or empowering others? Like, oh man, I, I'll be honest, man. Uh, everybody likes to give political answers mm -hmm. and say, oh, well, I just, of course, I, you do always want to help people, but right. at first, you want to help yourself. Right. So I was so lost and trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do? Who am I? How do I make money? How do I survive? If we skip over that, I think we, we're losing people. Because people, people, you'll hear somebody in a conversation like this and say, bro, I just always wanted to help people. And that is a desire, but mm. you can't help somebody until... Unless you help yourself. And part of helping yourself is self-identity. Figuring out, like, who the heck am I? Right. Beyond sports or whatever your thing was in high school, right. you have to redefine yourself. So... That's what it started as. It started on a journey to figure out who am I outside of money. Mm. And I was blessed to where I bought my first house at 19. 19? Yeah. So bro, like people buy, are, are not even thinking about buying properties at that age. Bro, I was I was blessed beyond measure, man. I grew up in a small town, Panama City, Florida. Uh, graduated high school, 15, turning 16. What? Went on, yeah, went but on. But you skipped a couple of grades? I did. I did. Went on to... Um, Went on to went off went off to college on down the line and back then man we started doing club promotions that took off from there I had a cleaning company on Panama City Beach uh, just everything I was doing at the time was just taking off yeah. so I was making making some money bought that first house about nineteen and generated at the time having six figures at sixteen seventeen bro from where I'm from if you can buy somebody a, a smothered covered dice and chunk <laughs> right. for those of you who don't know that's my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you could pay for that, you was balling, man. And I went from that to losing everything because right? I had money, but no, but no information. Mm. So you don't know what's a good deal in real estate. Yeah. You yeah. don't know how to invest your money. Like learning how to make it is one skill. Learning how to keep it is another. Exactly. Lost everything, man. And went down. What to, age was you? Because you bought your house in 19. 20, I'm like 24, 25, somewhere in there, I believe. And it happens like that around the age. It happened to me at 25. Yeah. Everything. But, you know. Because you, you think you, whatever you made, you're going to have forever. Exactly. Like, you don't you don't realize, like, bro, you're 25. You got a long life. That 100000 don't last you. <laughs> exactly. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But so, in that journey, man, of discovery of purpose, that's when I found my gift. Mm. That's when I realized who I want to help, how I want to help. Like, I, I found myself. And the only thing you do whenever you build a business, ultimately, or you're, especially if your business is service-based, you're only reaching back to help who you used to be. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that's it. I like that. And, and that's actually what I'm doing. That's, that's crazy you say that, bro. Yeah. All right, so you, you grew up in Panama City. Small town. Small man. town. How did you grow up? Did you come from the hood or were you from the suburbs? Bro, here's the funny part. I always tell people I grew up like Denzel in American Gangster and Preacher's Wife. Wait. <laughs> yeah, like both. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I mean. My mother and father are pastors, so okay. we wasn't we wasn't uh, you know poor, but we wasn't wealthy either, mm. right? So I'll say middle class. Okay. My, when my neighborhood hits, I'm growing up in a pastor's house with my mom and dad are pastors, but I'm growing up also in a city, Lynn Haven. Shout out to my partners from back home where yes, sir. I remember watching all my friends and all of us grew up in the streets from shooting dice to selling drugs. So you got what you would have in a small city. Okay. So imagine I grew up ambidextrous, where it's both street and church. Mm. So you got foundations of faith on one side. You want to be cool with your friends at church. On another side, you want to be cool with your friends in the neighborhood. Of course. So you grew up ambidextrous, being able to code switch and speak both languages. Got it. And at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you don't know who you are, so both of those end up being your personality. Mm, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, you end up being both. But you got to have both anyway, though. 100%. You know, to a certain extent, you know. But, uh, all right, so that's amazing. So you grew up with two pastors. Uh, how was that? Was it strict? Or, or no, man, right? man, thank God for my mom and dad. Uh, they were everything I could possibly need because how you normally grow up and you can't listen to music, can't do this. My parents weren't like that. Yeah. I'm like, or people say, oh, you grew up with church clothes. I, no, jeans, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't come up that way. Yeah. What I did, though, it it created for me what I think is the lens of my life now is not from a religious standpoint. It's the filter of how I treat people, how I view the world. Purpose is important to me, legacy. Like, the filter of my faith gives me the ability of how I treat people. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, let's get into the most important question because I've been thinking about it. 
How can I get my beard like yours? <laughs> well, you know, man. What's going on? Sometimes God bless you. Sometimes he spoil you, man. You know? Oh, man. I just send up a prayer for Trey and the rest of the brothers whose beard don't connect. Bro, Damn, man. baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> don't connect. They don't even grow. Yeah, damn, how much, I mean, damn. Hey, but, the you know, Lord knew. He's like, hold on, if I give him money and a beard, the boy would be arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> he can't give you everything now. All right, cool. Well, shout out to your barber because he done sliced and diced hey, you up, bro. Hey, listen. All right, man. Well, that's off topic. All right. All right, so you grew up. You come from a, sta st uh, a stable background. Yeah. Did you have any, on your journey to success now, what are, what are you, you're in your 30s, right? Yeah. On your 38. journey to success, 38. On your journey to success, did you have any setbacks, any any obstacles that you had to overcome? T tell us about the hard times that you had to deal with. M matter of fact, you could talk about when you had lost everything. Eleven dollars and thirty-seven cent. I will never <laughs> forget it. I know the number. <laughs> oh, it was wow. in a Regions Bank account. I was in Tallahassee, Florida. If you're from there, you know off of Appalachia Parkway, yes, on the corner of Appalachia Parkway and Monroe Street. I know. I'm familiar. Right, right up I'm the familiar. street from the moon. Yes, sir. Right. So I was at that bank. And looked and was like, I only got eleven dollars and thirty-seven cents. At least it wasn't negative. Tell my name. <laughs> Listen, it, any any auto pay would have took me there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was responsible <laughs> enough to not opt for auto pay. Got it. Got it. Man, that I would say that's the lowest lowest moment because it wasn't like I didn't have grown folks bills. Yeah. And then you don't know how you're gonna make money. I, I don't have a job at this time. Mm. I don't have a skill. I don't have a like. I don't even have clarity. Right. So if mm. you, I would say to anybody, if you don't have Number one, a steady source of income or a skill. There's only two ways that a person, and this is what I learned in that, in that process. Like mm -hmm. my low moment, bro, lights being off. I remember going two years, and this is when the George Foreman grill was out. Mm -hmm. The reason I talk in such detail is because most people talk real general. Mm -hmm. When I name the street and everything else, people that's from there know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A George Foreman grill at this time, mm -hmm. my grocery list, I would go to Walmart, I would mm -hmm. get great value bread, Great value turkey burgers and noodles. That was my mm. grocery list for two years. Mm. That's all I could afford to eat. Mm. I would be full because I knew the bread. I can get for a dollar and some change back then, even cheaper. Right. You get your pocket some ramen noodles, yes, some sir. ramen noodles. Yes, sir. You know yes, sir. Can't go wrong. Less than five dollars, and you can eat all week. Throw it on the George Foreman grill. Mm. I remember during that time, man. Uh, my my dream and my prayer was making enough money to be able to pay all my bills at the same time. Okay. Like that was the goal. Wow! I just want to make enough that I can pay all my because I could. I went for two years and never went an entire month where all the bills were paid. Something was late. Wow! So you get so low, man. That that success at the time was an easier struggle. It yeah. wasn't success. My picture of success, I was struggling so bad. Think about that, just to pay my bills. That's, yeah. That's not success. That's normal. Yeah. Man, so climbing out of that mentally. I would say the gap in the thing that happened was I started reading like crazy. Uh, why? I don't know. I have to believe that it was a divine idea because nothing would tell you that reading is the answer. Mm. <laughs> like most things that you start doing, the journey to success begins in ignorance. Mm. Like if you say, hey, I'm going to do real estate, you didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. you, didn't know who, you didn't know anybody in it. So mm -hmm. I mean your journey to success began in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Most people ain't willing to make the journey. Mm. From ignorance to information to knowledge to strategy to wisdom. So I started reading, bro, and it exposed me to a lot. What's some of the books you read? My very first book, I was in Jacksonville, North Carolina, that I read from cover to cover at the time, was Joel, um, Joel Osteen, Osteen. Your, your Best Life Now or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I read. He, he got a couple books, yeah. too. It is Living Your Best Life Living Now. Living Your Best Life Now. Yeah, I read that. The he, second he, one was powerful. Miles Monroe. Then I fell in love with Miles. But, um, Miles Monroe, that's the author. What, what guy book? named Miles Monroe. So it was called uh, Redis Rediscovering Purpose. Mm, I got to check that one uh, out. Yeah. So that book changed my life because I was learning about purpose. I went, man, from purpose, I went from that to like, I just went on a journey. I felt, I stumbled on, at the time, Jim Rohn, and I started listening to some of his stuff. Yes, Jim Rohn is amazing. Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within. Mm -hmm. That book changed the game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so many others. Like, yeah. it's, so, it's so many of them. I fell in love with reading, and reading opened up something totally different for me. Mm. Uh, what's my the book that I re that really hit me? I can't remember the author's name right now, but The Science of Getting Rich is the, is the title. Wallace D. Waddles. Yeah. Yes, sir. Look, yep. I read The Science of Getting Rich and The Science of Being Great. Both of those. And the way I came across them, 
I was watching The Secret in the, the beginning. Yeah. She says her, she was at her lowest point. She lost her husband and all that. And her mom gave her a book. And I'm like, well, what the hell was that book that her mom gave her? And I fast forward to the part, paused it. It was the science of getting rich or it was the science of being great. Read that, small little books. And then I'm like, what, what else this author wrote? And he had wrote those two, and I, I read both. So that's amazing you say that. It stretch your mind. Yes, it does. Or uh, what's my the quote I stumbled on? Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, a, a mind that has been stretched by by a new idea cannot return to its original dimension. Wow, like that changed the game. Wow. Like that quote. That's like, amazing. Right, like that. A mind that's been stretched by a new idea cannot, cannot return to its original dimension. Right. Uh, I like, What's I my love other it. one? Uh, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go and do it because what the world needs are those that have come alive. These quotes are still Damn. with me. All right, say that one more time. Just don't, so people... don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive. That's Howard Thurman. Mm. Because what the world needs are those that have come alive. Mm. That quote is how I started my first book. Like, mm. Don't ask what the world needs. You focus on a deep-centered empathetic selfishness and I, that's word like when i say empathy where you have empathy for for something you don't know but it's selfish because like it feels like it's about you at first mm -hmm. but it becomes about people when you fall into your purpose mm. <laughs> right? right so like don't ask what the world needs ask what makes you come alive mm. because what the world needs is for you to come alive they need you to be you mm. so you can give your gift to the world 100 percent. that's amazing because when you walk in your purpose you're going to help transform other lives because you're living your best life and people get inspired by that. People get inspired just by seeing you running on the side of the road. I used to pick at people if I seen them run crazy and shit. Then I'd be like, what the hell is wrong with my mind? Now I see people running, I'm like, I need to be doing what 100%. they're doing. They're exercising, they're getting themselves together. That's positive. So just a small idea of you running and exercising, that can inspire and encourage Bro, and motivate be, people. You would be shocked because you don't live you don't live in a world where you see yourself in a mirror. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't see yourself. You right. see everything except you. Yeah. You'd be shocked how you doing what you do inspires somebody else to get started. You right. 100%. So like someone sees you close a deal and they're like, let me look into real estate. But mm. that might be their purpose. Mm. So you living in your purpose allows them to be inspired and, and know that it's possible. You know, so I, I think that's the power of it. Like I got exposed to some things. I watched a lady make a million dollars in a day and I'm like what like this was my journey 2014 and I'm sitting there like what is it she's selling that's how I got introduced to funnels mm. into the online space I had never heard of it nobody that I knew of was talking about digital marketing at this time there is no Facebook live Instagram live there is no zoom it's free conference call dot com mm. <laughs> you know none of these things exist mm. and I'm watching her sell for twenty five thousand dollars I'm telling you where I'm from bro five grand is what we was trying to get for a heavy Chevy and some rims. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So to hear someone and be in a room where people are running to the stage, she's like, I only got 10 slots and they're getting the order forms. At the time, I didn't know what the order form was. And begging to sign up for something for $25,000 to learn how to build their business. Wow. I'm like, whatever that is, yeah. I want to learn. Not just the sales process, like, what did you develop? What did you learn mm -hmm. that would make people beg to give you $25,000? Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exposure. Powerful. That's exposure. So, so <clears throat> let's back it up. You had the $11 in your bank account. You started reading books. Yeah. And then after that, how did you get out of that? I became a different person, right? So... I'm going to give an example. I'm an example person. Bro, okay. you cannot get on, on a steady diet of anything and it not alter you, negatively or positively. Mm -hmm. Right? So eat bad food every day, mm -hmm. you gain weight. Mm -hmm. So I see the result of what you feed yourself. Mm -hmm. Eat healthy food every day, you get healthier. I see the result of what you feed yourself. Mm -hmm. So bad intake, bad outtake. Mm -hmm. So if I'm intaking information from people who wrote in a book what I read in days, they, they wrote from experience from decades. Yeah. I collapsed the years. So mm -hmm. I'm learning principles that people lived out for 30 years mm -hmm. that I'm reading in a week and writing it down and now my mind is expanded. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the same person anymore. 100%, 100%. You get what I'm saying? Because you can't go back to that same dimension. 100, 100%. <laughs> right. Can't go back. Now here's the here's the crazy part. I don't, I don't want to even get into this because I'm trying to tell a story but I think this will help someone. Okay. 
the frightening part emotionally and i hope this helps someone who might struggle with finding your community finding your home as you grow and evolve you have changed and you're not the person you used to be but but the next level you're gonna go to you haven't met those people yet so you mm. don't have a community mm. so you're struggling to hang out with people you've always known while you're not the same person mm. <laughs> well if you change right now mm -hmm. but the only people you know is the people on this level mm -hmm. you have not met your community at the next level yet mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can't be the smartest one in the room. You don't want to never be that. So so you feel lost. You feel uncertain. Like you're struggling with, okay, there got to be more people like me. You start feeling crazy. Yeah. Like that was part of the journey, right? Mm. Transitioning out of that, moving to it, moving to from Panama City, Tallahassee, Tallahassee to Atlanta. Mm. Atlanta changed my life. Got it. It's yeah. not the move in the city. It's I finally saw with my eyes what I saw in my head. Mm. I saw people doing what I always saw myself doing. Mm. And you've seen it. So that opened up your reality because now you see others doing it and you know you can it do it It is too. possible. Yes. Like, oh, man, people are living well and they're not selling drugs. Oh, they're not. They're not athletes. Yes. They're, yes. Uh, they're building their own business. Uh, hey, 100 the same agree. way that. Jeff Be Bezos owns a company. I can own one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can be the CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation. Oh, I could hire a COO and CMO mm. operations. For, oh, the way I used to fill out paperwork for HR, I can build my own HR department in my company. Mm. Amazing. That's so when I years later got to that place to where we got staff and employees like, oh. Yeah. And that's important for us to see that of our color. Because we don't see that really growing up. And like you say, Atlanta was a difference maker for you, was for me as well. Because our people really supported us, supported me here, especially with selling so many houses. Majority of my clientele was black people. Yeah. So seeing other black people being successful, when you come here, it gives you a different narrative and shows you I can be successful too. And I ain't got to sell drugs. I don't have to be on the corner. And y'all keep in mind. You don't have to do nothing illegal to get money. Yeah. There's a thousand, there's a million different things that, to do positively to make money. You just got to choose what's your passion. 100%. 100%. You agree with that? 100%. Won't he do it? You proof of that. <laughs> for you sure. You proof of that. 100%. And he's already committed to letting me hold $3 indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you read the books, you, you started changing your community, you got to Atlanta, and then you just start taking off from there. Yeah. Uh, one one relationship at a time. Got it. One relationship at a time, man. I believe that God answers all prayers through ideas and people. Got it. Right. So it's either an idea is going to come to you or a person is going to come to you that's going to make your dreams a reality. Mm. Right? So, and you have to be ready to act on it. You got to be prepared yeah. for when you see that opportunity. People ignore it because they say, man, I'm waiting on a door to open. The door is a person. Mm-hmm. The door is always a person. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Somebody's got to be on the other end and let you in. Can't and do they, it by yourself. And they got to introduce you to someone. So mm. step by step, I would meet people. They would fill a uh, gap for me and lead me here. Hey, have you heard of this? And it took off, man. Like, took off so fast, I wasn't ready for it because I was still that immature, insecure young man like in my mind i was still the guy with eleven dollars and 37 cent mm. although i had money mm. because money is enough to pay for everything except confidence mm. <laughs> you can't buy that you got to develop into that i like it and and let me piggyback on what you said because when you keep in mind when you meeting people to put you in these rooms or put you next to other people your mind and soul got to be right you got to have great character yeah. integrity trustworthy loyalty you can't be out here looking to try to get over a back door someone so when your energy is aligned and you feeling good and you're and you're doing you're making a positive change in your life and in others you able to get you able to meet these people and they see that you got a good spirit they're going to introduce you to others to help bring you up 100 percent, 100 percent. i mean j just think about this right like we met each other years ago yeah you in order for us to still be connected now, both of us had to walk in a level of integrity to even still rock with each other. Right? Yes, I mean, every time we see each other, there's love. Every time we talk, there's love. It's no shady business. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? hundred no, percent. You know, so like, you think the world is big, but it's smaller than you know, mm -hmm. right? Like somebody knows someone that can say, hey, what you think about Marcus? Hey, yeah. what you think about Trey? Yep. And that, that co-sign of that person knowing your, your character, your integrity, mm -hmm. how you show up for people, yep. and they'll say, oh yeah, 
he's going to do this, this, and that. They can tell you what to expect from that mm. person. That's a brand, bro. And that can be a million-dollar deal. Just that conversation someone having with another person about you, that can cause you a million or it can earn you a million. Bro, <laughs> how, how many people you think are losing money that they don't even know they're losing because their reputation is still in it? Yes. Like, bro, yeah. you, we've all seen it. We've seen people that was up, and what happened to such and such? <laughs> Here today, gone tomorrow. 100%. I agree with you, dog. All right. What? All right, first of all, how many books you've, you've written and, and been involved in? Yeah. So I've written a total of 23 books. 23. Yep. MJ. Written a total of 23 20, books. 20. How do you even think of 23 books to write, man? How and is I had that a lot possible? of near-death experiences, bro. Really? Gun pulled on me, trigger pull, gun jam, run across the street, it fires off. More than what? once. Got More hit, than once. Got hit by a car. He got hit by a car on a motorcycle. Knocked up in the air to where the car goes up underneath me. If I take my jacket off, you can still see a little small scar on my arm with no helmet, no gloves, and I walk out of it, right? What? So when I moved to Atlanta, 2014, I get hit by a car into a flatbed truck. I'm gonna show you the car like when we get a chance. I might send it to you so you can put it in this episode. What? I got hit by a car and knocked into a flatbed truck, right? So the truck on the motorcycle. Oh, and this is been a car. This is a separate situation. The flatbed, you know, real it goes through the whole car where it lifts the car. Yeah. So it missed me by this much. Imagine it went right by this and picked the car up. So if anybody in the car, if it touched me, it takes my arm off or it kills me. Yeah. Roof collapsed on down the line, man. Like I had a neck brace on, my wrist was fractured, lower back pain. I couldn't do anything. That was the last thing when I was like, man, I'm tired of saying I'm gonna write a book, saying I'm gonna do this. The moment this cast, now you got to think, I can't get a job if I want to. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody hiring someone that comes in with a neck brace, fractured wrist, back pain, and got to go to physical therapy. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, how often can you come to work? <laughs> Every day except, uh... <laughs> so imagine, I can't get a job if I want to. I can't travel and speak if I want to. Yeah. Right? So I'm in my head like, what can I do? Yeah. I said, when this cast come off, I'm going to write a book. I wrote the outline of it. On a board beside my bed, it was 10 different things. And I was like, every day I'm going to just write a chapter a day. Mm. And I was like, no TV, no, like, you put yourself on punishment. No TV, no nothing until you write a chapter. Mm -hmm. First book was called Win the Day, 10 Strategies for a Winning Life. I like that. It came from something I was already living when I was right, reading them books. Yeah. When I'm changing my life, all I did was write about what I did during that period of time. Mm. This was 20, October 10th, 2010 is when I started that journey of reading and developing and personal development, I didn't write my first book until July of 2015. We'll release it until July, two, so five years later. Mm. How can people find that book? It's on Amazon, it's on everywhere. Win yeah. the day. Yeah, you can find the audio book too. Win the day, yep. Marcus Rozier. Yep, 10 Strategies for Winning Life, man. So re write a chapter, because I'm writing my first book right now, bro, and my biggest thing is turning the TV off and stop my discipline I, I lack in discipline so i'm gonna be I, your accountability I, I, I need it i need it so a chapter a day and then what it take about a good hour to write a good it depends an hour or two it depends bro because uh inspiration shows up sometimes sometimes it doesn't mm. so when inspiration is there it happens faster mm -hmm. when it's not you need preparation so and a framework so here's what i would tell you if i'm writing a book okay right now i wouldn't think about it like writing a book i would think about it like having a conversation with with the people that the book is for so if I'm writing a book on let's let's do it right now. Give okay. me give me an idea a title. Uh let's see um how to how to change your negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Right. So that's the title how to change your negative thoughts into positive thoughts. We need an outline. Okay. So when we say hey let's do top 5 or 5 things you would tell someone who want to change their life. That's a mock table of content. Okay. That's where we start. You mm. start with a mock table of content. Mm -hmm. Where does that thought, you just ask yourself a question. Treat it like if I was interviewing you mm. and I said, Trey, what's five ways you can change your life? You would verbally tell me. Now you're just writing it. Mm. So you start with a mock table of content, like basic idea of what I think I want to talk about. Yeah. So number one, I would do these three things. All the three things under number one are your subsections of your book. Mm. So I got a, a main idea, supplementary ideas that that completes that thought mm -hmm. chapter one done mm -hmm. now this not your full book but you're getting it out of your head onto paper exactly so you start with a mock table of content you do bullet points or number one two three abc mm -hmm. underneath it mm -hmm. and just like that you're filling in the information of the chapters got it yeah so if it's 
um, if and if I name you can name them later, right? So you can flip the name of number one starting from the bottom, right? Moving from negative to starting from the bottom. I like that. Number two, taking putting your taking the first step mentally. Mm -hmm. Number three. Li living f living from the penthouse instead of from the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. And the, like you just name in titles, mm -hmm. and now the information goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, right? Because I don't think about it like writing a book. If you do, it's going you're not gonna write it well. Because mm. you're gonna be one person when you're speaking, one person when you're living, another person when you're writing. Mm. You don't want to think about it like writing a book. You mm. want to have a audience in mind that you are having a conversation with. I like it. Yeah, perfect, bro. I, I needed that because yeah. uh, I was I was about to think of it as writing a book, as me writing a book. And I only had an idea for three books. How the heck do you get 23? What? Bro, you live a lot of life. Um, my first one, one of the day, was, life, was from life, right? Second book was called Can I Keep It 100, Your Guide to an Authentic Life. Why? I struggled with uh, low self-esteem, lack of confidence. So I can write what it is like to navigate the space of being gifted but not knowing you're gifted, feeling like other people are better or different, et cetera. Yeah. Most people never talk about that. Exactly. And I want you to elaborate on that because I never really had low self-esteem, but for other people out there who has it, because I know it's a lot of people that do. Yeah. How do you, how, what what causes that and how do you overcome it? Yeah. Uh, so mo most of the time you want to fit in. Mm. So when you're different, are gifted like the way that I speak, talk, explain things. It's different from other people. Mm -hmm. I, now I live in that. I love it. Mm -hmm. But imagine, I'm 12, 13. I got and remember and remember large. And some be the worst times. I too. can remember large sums of information, but I'm also play sports. I'm, I'm growing up like, where okay, what is he? Is he this? Is he that? So I think sometimes it happens when a person is trying to come into their own and figure out who they are, what fits them. Yeah. If you ask most people, the, the hardest question for people to answer is, who am I? If I ask you who you are, you normally tell me what you do. Mm. If you don't know what you do, you tell me who you know. If you don't know a lot of people, you tell me what you have. Mm. So the average person tells you what they have, what they do for a living, or who they know. That's not who they are. Mm. So even people who think they are insecure typically are because they don't have enough strength and knowledge about who they are to mm. truly project them. What they're projecting is what they do. Mm. So the moment you stop doing that, you ain't you no more. And nobody should be able to take you from you. Mm. <laughs> Shit. Who are you? Oh, I'm a realtor. You're not a realtor. <laughs> right. That's an occupation. Who are you? Well, you know, I've been able to do this, this, and this. That's what you do. Who are you, man? Well, you know, for years I've done this, this, and this, lived in this city. The yeah. city and none of that. Who are you? Well, I'm the youngest of four kids. You didn't choose what order your parents had sex. Right. <laughs> none of that shit. Right, right. That's what I mean by authenticity. Got when, it. When you sort past... All the things that you can't control, yeah. how do you define you when you're grown enough to decide? That's profound, bro. <laughs> That's profound. I, I love it. I, I, what if you're an alien from outer space? Uh, uh, how do you define? Hey, a person has to has to dig into their core, <laughs> right? So, true. yeah, it's digging into your core of, like, truly defining how you want to show up in the world, right? Yeah. Like, you're grown enough now that become... We're both African American males. Mm -hmm. You didn't choose your gender, right? But it does make up how you view the world and how you experience the world. Yeah. If you say, "Hey, I'm the youngest of three kids," "Hey, I'm," an, you know, just all these nuances are a is a filter, mm -hmm. but it's not you. And sitting in that thought and discovering it, that's my superpower. Mm -hmm. I know me. I know what I don't like. Mm -hmm. I know what I like. Mm -hmm. I know how I want to show up. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel any need to protect what I'm not. I don't feel any. Need mm. to try to convince people of anything. Mm. That's confidence. So I got for, nothing to hide, nothing to protect, nothing to prove. That's confidence. So for anyone out there with self with self esteem issues or, or struggle with anxiety or depression, yeah. what would be your biggest advice you can give? Them? I can't speak to anxiety, depression because there's so much nuance in it with integrity where it could be, you know, chemical imbalance, all that. Like that would lack. It can be a chemical imbalance on that. Yeah. So like with the with depression and on that line, like that that could be something. That could be something in terms of chemically a person can be predisposed to mm. depression right mm -hmm. where so like to honor that community and the people who struggle with that i wouldn't just it ain't one plus one equal two. Oh, you got to do this mm -hmm. some people that lack integrity and don't realize the power of our words will try to answer that and be like well i would tell them to do this this and this mm. bro you can't prescribe for everybody mm. here's what i will say okay for people who maybe your journey is is, is aspects of my journey where 
let's say you get to Atlanta, what do you do when it takes longer for your success to show up? Mm. That's part was part of mine too. Other people were taking off, I was building mine, and then boom, I took off. Mm. Right? There is a feeling you get about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for any person, man, I would say your journey is your journey. Uh, the practical side of what I would tell a person to do. I don't think you can build a business or anything else, anything bigger than you build yourself. Get around a community. Change what you're feeding yourself. So whether that's the words you say to yourself, the words you read, the words you listen to. Yeah. Like self-talk is big. Mm-hmm. I believe in it. Mm-hmm. You, you, we both believe, power your words. Exactly. Like you already, you, we on the same There's vibe. There's power in the tongue. You like, and I, like I done seen you talking about it, writing it down. Like, yes. You can speak things into existence, man. But first you got to think it, know it. Speak it into existence and then apply it, do it, be thankful. Yeah, man. Perfect. All right, brother. We're going to get to some more of these questions. Have I asked you what motivates you yet? Uh, I don't I think so. We, now, we haven't even got to none of these questions. I've been so man. intrigued about the conversation. We've been kicking it. What What motivates you? Like, what gets you up out of bed and, and say... This is what I'm doing. Obviously, the eleven dollars and thirty-seven cents. I ain't never going. Back. Never going back there. <laughs> I ain't never going uh, back. Anything else? Yeah. So, I've got a. I'm a very systematic person, so I got a core four, which is like my life's mission statement. I okay. think everybody should write it. I teach my clients to create a LMS life mission statement. Mm. Mine is four things that it's on my mirror, so when I brush my teeth in the morning, I can see it. And it's in a question mark style where I ask myself the question. Number one, what pleases God? Mm. Number two, what I'm gifted at and love doing. Okay. Now that one's important because you can be gifted at things that you don't like doing. So Mm. I always evaluate. There's one season of your life you love doing something that makes you money, but you can lose love for it, although you're gifted to do it. Does it make sense? That's 100%. I've been through it. So the second one of my life mission statement is I always want to do what I'm gifted at and love doing. Okay. Number three, what helps people and number four, what pays me well. Mm. That's my, that's what motivates me. So every night, if I can answer the question and go four for, imagine me going four for four for the rest of my life. Mm. Every day I did something that in the mind of God is why he allowed me to be born. Mm. I did something that I'm gifted at and love doing. I helped somebody and it paid me well. Why do I need to be paid well? If you don't make money, you'll spend your life selfishly thinking about your needs and you can't meet nobody Mm -hmm. else's. What money does is allows you to isolate and focus on what you want to do and who you want to help without wondering can you afford it. Mm. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my, that's my, that's what motivates me. Life mission statement. That's it. Write it down, guys. Like LMS. All right, brother, that's amazing. Um, what are are there any goals that you haven't accomplished yet with being such a, such a huge success already what's some of your big dreams and goals that you haven't reached yet oh i got tons man that's amazing i got, I got so you keep it going and even when you reach them i'm sure you got more oh, but, yeah. but what is it give me a couple man number one on my list right now is to build a community a, a large large community i want a community of over ten thousand people okay for one purpose to be able to help people Never. You already got that though. You got a hundred thousand followers, so you got. Well, I mean, that's, you that's got social media, man. <laughs> yeah. like, that's social. But, but you got at least a community of ten thousand right there, though. I'm talking about like active, okay. involved. We're leading, and each person is walking in their calling, right? Like, mm. so what that looks like is that group of people. I speak in frameworks. So you got excuse me. Balancing the tension between like what they're called to do, like that's different for everybody. Mm-hmm. Make, like making their impact on the world so that what they're called to do their cash flow I want people to eliminate off their list we always gonna want more money I get that mm-hmm. but I'm talking about when you solve your problem financially where that ain't really I'm blessed to be in a position where I don't have to worry about if I can pay my bills yeah. like that's that's not a concern of mine Right. I want to help more people get there got it Right? Yeah. I want people to know what that feels like mm-hmm. so they can finally realize you didn't answer all the life questions mm. So when you get there to that place where you solve the money problem, you then move until you want to impact people. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to do. So that's one big, big goal. Uh, second one. But is, you're already doing that, though. I'm on my way. But you, so, but ten thousand. Okay, that's a big goal. Yeah, I'm talking about active community. That all of them are. We're connected. Like I got hundreds of thousands of impressions and people online. But I don't know if all of them. All believe what I believe. All of them are debt-free. Yeah. All of them walking in their God-given calling. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? 100%. Yeah. 
hundred percent. Uh, my second man, definitely. I want a son, man. I got a baby girl, but I want uh, a son. Oh, yeah, I feel that. I want a son. I got to have my baby boy. It's amazing. A son is amazing. I have a son, so. Man, you got blessed. Yeah, you man, got blessed. It's, it's true. I want a little girl, though. Lord. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> See how it go? We always want what we all have. There you go. There you go. Okay. Anything else? Man, I got a bunch of them. I want to. Give me one. Give me the lifetime, greatest I, one. In my lifetime, I want the ability to give a house away. That's major. Yeah. That's yeah, major. Yeah. Like that's on my list. I got to, a whole to a li- family member or to just nah, anyone. Non family. Uh, just to be a blood like I got a list of things that before I mm. leave before I leave this earth, man, I gotta boom, 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 mm. boom, boom. And you know what? That's good because that gives you structure and guidance when you have a plan and, and a goal list. Now you have a GPS and navigation yeah. system to try to get to your end result. Yeah. Which is that? That's amazing. Friend book. of mine. Well, you know, David Shans had a shirt called. Um, yeah, David. Shout out to David. He's actually gonna. He said he's gonna do the podcast. That's too. my man. Yeah, he's he had a shirt on. called that said "Make a Million, Save a Million, Type a Million." Make a million, save a million, type a million. Type a million. Type. Oh, to give. yeah, like give, give, wow. give a million away. And I, that shirt hit me and became a goal for me. Mm. Like made a million, cool. Mm. Save, like got it. I like I'm in that phase where it's like, how do you give back? How do you that. set not an income goal but a giving goal mm. of one million? Like to say I gave away a meal in a year. I think you can accumulate it over time. It don't have to be a million at one time. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that's a lot to give that away would, at one time. That would be a, a great way to track it. Like exactly. hey, in ten over a ten year period, yeah. I want to give. There we you can, go. You can break it down yearly. Over ten years, you know, I want to get over ten thousand a year. That's my goal. You know, over ten or, years, or I want to get away. Ten thousand a year. It doesn't matter because when you're in the act of giving it. One thing I've noticed when you giving, it ain't even about the money. Yeah. Because the people don't know what to do with money if they don't have any knowledge of what you know. A lot of people don't have knowledge of what to do with money. So true. So the greatest gift is knowledge, is what I've learned. So you already walking in that. So you're what you're doing right now is already greater than money, because you're teaching people how to get to the money, how, how to fish, that. how to be more confident in themselves, how to read. That gives people, instead of you just saying, hey, here goes $50,000, you give them all the information to go get their own 50, that's more valuable than the money. I love that. Yes, sir. You that's just it. help me, you just help me reframe it. There you go. You just help me reframe <laughs> it. I do a little something. Cause, cause, it's true, Cause it's true, if yep. someone would have gave me a million dollars when I was thinking the way I thought years ago. It, yeah, it'll be gone. We would have just find, I would have thought about who to give the money to by buying stuff. Yep, and that's <laughs> it, and that's how it happens. So. And I learned that because I used to see homeless people on the side of the road, and I'm like, damn, I want to have so much money where I can give back to all these people so they ain't got to be homeless no more. Yeah. But that's not going to be true because they don't have some maybe lacking the intelligence that comes with what to do with the money. Mm-hmm. So you got to teach people what to do with the money, how to get it. The greatest blessing to others, I believe, is mental stimulation, spiritual stimulation. Yeah. And for them to accept it, because a lot of people may not even accept it. That's so true. A lot of people may not even want an abundant life, you know? So you already walking in your purpose, brother. So don't get so caught up in that million. The knowledge is the greatest gift. Wow. Yes, sir. Well, I, I already gave away a million, a million <laughs> yeah. dollars worth of game. There you go. The, not the there podcast. There you go. <laughs> exactly. On Maybach Conversations. All right, perfect, brother. Um, so we got like a just one or two more questions left, and then we're going to get into relationship status. Oh, love. All right? Okay. All right, so what do you feel? Well, first, it's just two questions. What Do you have any mores or codes or standards that you live by? 100%. Uh, number one, ne- never, never take more than you give. In any relationship, business partnership, mm. friendship, never, That's great. never take more than you give. Okay. Uh, anything that takes more from something that it gives is, is dead, mm. right? So if if the ground receives rain, if the ground receives rain and doesn't release it, it's dead grass. Anything that can receive from something and can't give back to it is co- is considered dead. Wow! Right? Never want that. I don't want dead relationships, dead lifestyle. I don't want that either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, always add value to anything or anyone, anything you're part of or anyone that you're around. Mm. The only number that can be connected to a num- another number and not increases value is a zero. 
Man, you talk. Say that again. <laughs> I want to say? add value to okay. anything I'm a part of, or any room I'm in, or anyone I'm around or connected to. Yes, sir. So Me too. I like that. If a billion dollars is connected to a zero, a billion is a billion. A zero is a zero. Neither person can add. Mm. But in multiplication, because I believe in acceleration in relationships. And multiplication, a zero attached to anything drags down the sum total of the number. There you go. So a billion becomes zero if it's attached to a zero. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have them circles. 100%. Yes, sir. That's man, the code, I, that's the Boy, code I live by. You pre You got that pastor in you, man. You could have been a preacher too, huh? All of it. All of it. <laughs> All, of it. All of it. Anything else you want to add? Got, I got tons, you got plenty. Of, I, I got tons of we, philosophies I, that I live I, by. Um, I'm going to give you one more, which right. is a financial principle I live by. Okay. I teach my clients anything that costs you more than a thought, you can't afford it. Anything that costs you more, more than, than a thought, thought you, you can't, can't afford, afford it. it. Here's why. Okay. Everything that you buy is a thought. It is. So if you are driving in a car, it is the thought of the creator. Yes, sir. Which means you use effort, energy to exchange money to buy somebody else's thought. If mm. you don't have a way to package, market, and sell yours, mm. it's the fastest way to go broke. Mm. <laughs> So the goal is to sell your thoughts and take a percentage of that mm -hmm. and buy somebody else's. Mm. So if you're looking to, if you say, what would you do if you made $100 million? And you say, well, I would buy this, I would do that. Mm -hmm. You have buy a plan to buy other people's thoughts, yep. but not to fund yours. Mm. <laughs> That's profound, bro. And, Most, and I, go and ahead. You get it. And, and Most I, people I don't like have that. an investment strategy. Yeah. That, so if you ask the average person that haven't discovered purpose, mm -hmm. what would you do if you made a billion dollars? They're going to tell you the thoughts they would buy. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say, I would invest in my thought, mm. which means money won't solve nothing. They're mm. on their way to being broke. Uh, 100%, <laughs> bro. Hey, you know, that's crazy because I preach all the time. Everything right now, we're living in someone else's thoughts right now. These clothes, your jewelry, this bottle, this glass. AP. Oh. AP. Ooh, I saw oh. that too. Yo, oh. a everything is someone else's thoughts. Our clothes, our hair, I mean, haircut, hairstyle, sh freaking everything. These massage seats. <laughs> <laughs> so we living in someone else's thoughts. So the, bi the biggest thing comes to is what value are you going to bring to the world so people can live in your thoughts mm -hmm. think about that so true accomplish that all right man I, I, that's profound I, I love it so we're gonna move on because i know we we over here at 50 minutes but you, you you're giving a lot of now i knew that was gonna happen I, I with went you by fast man. man anytime you're dealing with a motivational speaker that <laughs> that got two pastors for parents you you finna get the knowledge so and that's what i want to give back is the knowledge to everyone and first of all how can the people find you Man, I'm the easiest person in the world to find, whether you're the FBI or a jealous girlfriend. <laughs> Marcus Y. Rogers. <laughs> Marcus, the letter Y. So M-A-R-C-U-S, if you type the letter Y, I pop up. Okay. Or you can type in the whole last name, R-O-S-I-E-R. -E so Marcus Y. Rosier. Great guy right here. All right, brother. You got to come on my podcast, man. I'm definitely coming, man. I'm coming. Right. I'm going to draw some little, little jewels. I got, two, jewels. Two, I got two different shows, man. So it's, I got two ideas. Of, I got to have you on there. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're going to get into the relationship status. Got you. Are you single, married? Yeah, so I'm married. You're married right now? Yeah. Wow, married. that's amazing, bro. I did not know that. Yeah, man. How, how many years? Yeah, year and a half, so we knew. Year and a half. Congratulations, we, brother. We're trying to figure it out over here. I understand. <laughs> that, that's what it's about anyway, we're right? Trying to figure it out. And how long y'all was together before you got married? A year. A year. A so year. a year of no so two I and was half ready. total. I was ready. That's amazing. Cause I, I believe I'm ready. I just don't know how to go about it. So what type of advice can you give to someone who's trying to figure it out? Because Atlanta is a tough place to find love. Ooh, yes. Right? You know, and any I think any major city is a tough place to find love. How what? How did you find your wife? So we met on this thing called Instagram. <laughs> you know where everybody meets there. It That's the number one dating site. Right. <laughs> un un unintentionally, the number one dating site right. on the planet. <laughs> Intentionally, but unintentionally. Right. Okay, so go ahead. She was living in Canada. Ottawa, Canada. Canada. Canada got some down-to-earth women. That, but her they perspective. They got some down to earth women. It was her perspective, man. Yeah. The way she saw the world, what was important to her aligned with me. Um, mm. We met, we talked via Instagram before exchanging numbers for like a week and a half, which I enjoyed. Like, okay. can, if we can't hold a conversation via like texting back and forth, it was mm. going to be horrible anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we started communicating. I just saw values aligned, 
what was important to her. We talked for the first month about everything except us. Really? We wasn't talking about dating. We wasn't talking about each other. It wasn't you fine. It wasn't you attractive. It was just life, perspective, what's important. Had you seen this? She was talking about books she was reading, which was, you know what I'm saying? It was a very yeah. different conversation first. Right. That, women read books and give the men advice on what books to read. That's impressive. And we acknowledge that, and that shit shows a lot. One hundred percent. She's like, "Hey, have you ever read this or this?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, I think so." Yeah, what? It, oh, and she's quoting some of the stuff from it. So we had. I remember us talking for two, three hours on con stuff that had nothing to do with you. Fine, I'm fine. It was. Mm. Just, so I was like, "Okay, that's amazing." Yeah. So you had that. Our faith aligned. Both of her parents are pastors. Now that it, that ain't a that yeah. ain't a. You, that's not a real reason to to marry somebody. How, you want your faith to align, but I'm talking about her pastors, her parents being pastors. That's aligned. pretty damn There's close. Nothing here, no there. That that's pretty close to alignment, brother. I mean, both parents are pastors, bro. So our, both fil sides? our filter for like if we were gonna raise kids together, it's important to me. I share the same faith with somebody. We of believe course. in the same thing. Okay. Um, how she viewed money, she wasn't thinking about ways to spend my money. Mm. She was thinking of. Adding volume was important. I think the biggest thing she came to visit, she was living in Canada, she came to visit, and mm -hmm. it was, I was working like crazy. Something came around, like I remember giving her my my, my credit card, gave her my Amex, Amex Platinum, was Ooh. like, hey, you can grab something to eat, this and this, and we were going to an event. Yeah. She came where we're supposed to hang out, but you know how Atlanta is, an event pop up, so you don't have anything for that. Right. I didn't mind, I was like, here you go. He was gone for a minute. You know, you start getting nervous. I'm like, hold on, I live in Buckhead. Hold on. Is she, is she, is, is she at Neiman's wearing me out? Is she at sex? Bro, she called me back and was so excited. She's like, oh, I love, she's like, I forgot to tell you I love thrifting. So, man, you guys got, I Googled it so many. She went thrifting all day. Really? That's her thing. Wow. Saving you money. That's her thing. And in my head, I'm like, what? Then I'm like, did she think I'm broke? Like, does she? <laughs> you know, not, not with that Amex Platinum. She didn't. Uh, she knows she didn't. But that's just her, right? So I had to learn even when we got married, I would try to solve all problems or think romance was buying her stuff. That ain't her language. She yeah. don't care nothing about that stuff. Mm. She want to, like, she genuinely want to chill at the house and watch a movie and lay in the bed and cuddle wow. and just, right? Like, that's my every favorite. Wednesday we do date we do date night and what we call check in. Okay. So we don't do love languages. We got like buckets of what's important to us. Okay. So we do a check in. Got it. Where am I with this? This is this. Here's my point. Instead of a date night, she wanted to go to a Jamaican restaurant. She was like, hey, I just want to go pick up the food and we just chill here and just watch TV. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's always been her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. if I'm buying something or doing something, she's she's probably more conscious. She always wanted, wanted diamond earrings. I bought her earrings, and she was just sad. Well, she was like, well, do you know how many people we can bless with that? And I'd rather, wow. like, that's, that's her perspective. Just wow. She would, so, wow. in a line, man, it was, it's a great balance. It's total opposite of me, which anytime you get opposite, you like it, but it's also areas you struggle until you you learn how to be one with the person. I understand. I'm disciplined, organized. My closet is color order. Like wow. whites, blacks, long short sleeve, long sleeve. Can you come to my closet and bro, help me out, bro? My cologne bottle, tall and short. Like I'm very God dang. I am very I'm that way in business too. Yeah. I can tell you everything we're doing in every business between now and next year. Like my marketing company I already shot my ass for Black for Black Friday next year. <laughs> I mean for the end of this year, right? I shot them in twenty twenty three. What? So I could tell you, we're in January at the time of this, right? So I could tell you what I'm doing in February, March. I'm doing a, March and April, my partnership months. Mm. And May is my birthday, so I've got a conference that's rolling out July 6th to the 7th. We're doing a, a conference at the gathering spot. Yep. In August, we do... I'll pull up to it. Right? Them. In yeah. August, we do a challenge. In September, we do a, a something called Epic Retreat. Like, and I can tell you every single month. And I, Damn, man. October will be in Mexico, second week of October. November is where we then do what we call Mob Family Reunion, which is my community monetized online business blueprint. Mm. And December, we do something where we sell the year. Everything we did through the whole year, and I take December off. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, like, that's how wow. I function. I can tell you what I'm doing. I got to do better. Bro. You, you put me to shame right now, bro. Yeah. Damn, did you, you say you or, CEO. organize the, the sleeves, long sleeves? And, bro, bro, it's got to be. Gotta and the be. bottles of cologne from yeah. the tallest. To bro, come on now. Organization, man. It's key, huh? It, it, it changes everything. I like that. It changes everything. That requires a certain level of discipline, too, though, bro. 
I wasn't that. That that change that we were talking about that happened in the year. It wasn't just reading books. Yeah. It was augment. I was a ultimate procrastinator. Like a lot of us are. I, I convinced myself I work well under pressure. No, you don't. No, you know, you just wait to the last minute and it's a mm. good narrative, right? Mm. When you are a procrastinator, you are one emergency away from having to be selfish. Mm. If you got a document where you got to close on, you got to turn in paperwork tonight or the house don't get closed on, mm -hmm. but a family member has an emergency where you got to rush to the hospital, mm. you got to choose between getting to the hospital and signing the paperwork because mm -hmm. you waited to the last mm -hmm. minute. Procrastination always costs somebody. Mm. <laughs> Damn it, always. Man. It always calls somebody. You put me to shame over here. I, 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 I love it because now you're making me do better. So I need to. I'm gonna go plan out. I'm gonna. I'm Even a, if you plan the week. Nah, I, I plan the week. Oh, you but that's about as far as I get. You at least, <laughs> you at least want a general. I, I can tell you how I do my week, how yeah. I do my days. Like, so my weeks are in rhythms because you got multiple companies. So I only coach on Monday. So Monday's my coaching day. Tuesday because I have a podcast and because I have to film content for my four different coaching programs, I do content and staff meetings on Tuesdays. Mm. Wednesdays are my study days. You can't output information without input. So I do. That's the day. My wife. Let me, let me just stop you. Let me just stop. Yeah. So it's, what, it's what, what, what if it's a day that you like, man? Shit, I'm tired. I want to stay in. I don't want to do shit today. What, what, what did you do then? You got a block. So here's what I would say. Some days you're gonna have that. Right. However. If life did not afford you the luxury of making money, you wouldn't have the choice. There's somebody who's making sure these roads we're traveling on yep. don't have more potholes than what they have. Mm. They get up and they work. So we can't take for granted the luxury of owning businesses because the business will fire you when you don't make enough money. Damn. It's gratitude. Bro, you a work, work you're is profound brother. Work is gratitude. You're from, we gonna do. We gonna hang out a lot more. <laughs> you, you about to be my mentor. Yeah, this bro, you my man, hundred grand. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. So I, 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 just, I, I get it. 100%. It ain't working all day though either. Like yeah. I can show you my. It's time problem. blocking, bro. It's twip like two. I'm gonna show you so people know I ain't capping. If you look at my Tuesday, I'm gonna go to my calendar. What did I say it was? Content day. It's a block from two out of four. I see it. That's it. I see two it. out of four. On the days I coach, look how crazy my coaching day is. You know, I don't even use my calendar like that's I should Monday. either. I need to. On Step Wednesday, on that's in place. See what happens on, like, my days are rhythm. If you look, bro, I even put to remind myself to call my homeboy. Because <laughs> I'll forget. Wow, this dude is one of the most organized <laughs> damn individuals I've ever seen in my life. And I'm tired of it because it's putting me in a shame. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you show me shit else. No, man. Bro, all right. okay. We all have our thing. I, I ain't perfect. It's motivating me, stretch. though. It's motivating me, though, because now. I want to go order, organize my drawers. It's Calvin Klein and pay somebody, bro. <laughs> pay, somebody. Pay, pay somebody to do what they love yeah. that you don't enjoy. There you go. You got a damn quote for everything, bro. That's how I rock. I feel it. That's how I rock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm I'm write a book just off of your ass. Mental real estate. <laughs> Same way people can own buildings, I own thoughts. I love it, man. I love it. You, 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 you doing amazing, brother. You inspire me with this conversation we having. Feel is mutual, bro. I'm learning from you. We, we do have to be more intentional, man. We've been cool since forever. But of course. Both of us be busy or we'll cross each other. Every time we see each other, we talk for hours. Bro, you know really what it is? I've been bullshitting, procrastinating, lack of self-discipline. Mm. And I, I, like this year, I turned 40 this year. Really? Yes. So what, what month? August. That's what's up, man. So, so I, this year, I was like, I'm tired of the bullshit. Uh, you know, I was smoking marijuana. You know, I had to stop that shit. Yeah. Because that brings a lot of procrastination. If you're smoking weed and you got big goals, cut the shit out. And and I, that's what I really had to do. Yeah, I think that chilling. was... You be wanting to chill. You don't be want to talk to nobody and all that shit. So, I cut out all the bullshit. And this year, I'm just so focused and driven. And it's, like I said, it's really been my fault. Because right. I could have been so much further. You know, you could be so much further in your life. And you... Uh, where I met is great and all that. But it's, it's it can be way higher. We grow together. Yeah. Like, there's things I learned from you think, bro, we can do it. We, even if it's your tray, at least once a month, we just link whatever yeah. that looks like. Even for an hour we'll or so. Do, we'll do a mastermind. Right. right. It's, it's, I, I, I got a plan that I'm going to put together for us. Hit but, me anytime. You got, my, we, you got my number. Oh, man, I got you. You, you, you my mentor now, bro. You, you no, one of my bro, mentors brothers, now. I didn't even know you it's was like, this profound, and, my what guy. me and Neo refer to each other as his friend tours. <laughs> we both, we friends. There it we is. We friends and we learn from each other. There we it friend is. tours. There it is. 
Um, all right, <clears throat> back to the marriage. How's the married life compared to the single life? Man, everything has a yin and yang, pros and cons, depending on where you are at the time. I couldn't imagine the level of focus I have now without removing that question mark. Mm. Like, when you solidify that, your home life and who the person you're going to spend your time and your life with, mm -hmm. there's a level of focus and drive and determination you get mm. because that's out the way. You you know, when you got bro, when you got multiple people calling your phone and all of that and you, okay, I got to make time for this person, that, that is... I can imagine with all I got to think about because that's the fatigue I experience now is, is thinking. I don't need to balance nothing else in my head of can I go there and who gonna run into me. Mm. You're talking to four or five girls. You got to text four of them before you go to every restaurant to see where they at. Mm. I ain't got that kind of bandwidth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I got way too much to think about. So it is a blessing, man, to have a person that you know. It's a, it's, it takes a lot off there's the shoulders. Rock, there's bro. rocking with you. That's there for you. Yeah. And you, it's your your job to, you're building all the other things and you're one person for all those businesses, mm -hmm. right? But you need a person that whole thing is to build you while you build that. Mm. And that's important, ladies. Build that man while he's building that business. Yeah. What are some ways that the woman help builds up the man? Because man. I'm missing my queen in my life and I know that I can be greater, but... What's some of the things that your woman may yeah, have so, done to help add and some that the other women can learn from your woman that she's done to help build you up? One of the things my lady pointed out to me is how unhealthy I was emotionally. Mm. I didn't realize how much I ignored myself and just work, 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 physically, mm -hmm. mentally, etc. And I made time for everything to help me. Mm -hmm. Boundaries, things of that nature. So imagine now I'm on this whole idea of like this stress-free living, mm -hmm. that intentionality of that. So mm -hmm. that was one thing. Um, another is, man, it's something about when you're finally done with all your work to have someone that can that peeps you and know mm. when you when you need conversation, when you need silence, or when sometimes you just want company. Somebody, mm -hmm. you know, so like learn somebody who really is refueling you and finding ways to do that. Mm. Um, what else? Could, it's so many things, man. We, or that, that, as man, we like being celebrated. So my lady. It's so often that I do something, I come in there and look and see she got a book full of notes from all my speeches. What? So it's like, she's like, yeah, I love hearing you speak. That feels good. Wow, that does. That feels good hearing you say it. Or she took my recent, last week I had to pre-record some stuff. And she's like, hey, babe, I think you ought to do that again. That wasn't your best. It wasn't clear. Mm. You need see, that. See, that's how you. You need that. That's how you level the elf she'll, up. She's like, it's not bad, but yeah. I know you. She's like. You care about you. I want everything I do to last for for years. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't think that's one of those you're gonna be proud of years from now. Wow, wow, that's <laughs> that's that's major. You got oh. your winner, bro. Man, thank you. you I'm mad. I want to invite you to the wedding. What the hell, bro? We ain't even doing wedding. Not man. yet. We didn't even you do. do we, it. You we, can do it later. We gonna do one, man. My my pops, man. I'm praying for him. Hasn't walked in almost two and a half years. So oh, I'm sorry. To hear that. We went to. So he, so he could be there to him. instead of courthouse in that went to the living room and he did a little private thing for us right there yeah. in the living room man so it was it was what what he wanted yeah it worked she was fine with it her brother was there her family's at the time this during the pandemic her yeah. family couldn't come from Canada to town so we got to do something where everybody can be there that's amazing man yep I got you all right we got our last two questions <clears throat> how do you endure the tough times in marriage? True, man. Or in a relationship. I be, wish I had that answer. Because y'all uh, y'all do go through tough times, what? right? Yeah. So how do you... Operation, get on my nerves in full effect. <laughs> how, do, how do you keep it going? Yeah, we, where... got, we got coaches, though. Okay, so kind of like think, therapy a little bit? Therapy and coaches. I think you need both. I think you need therapy that helps you sort through. You're bringing all of your individual baggage and partner with a person, and sometimes not what you say, but how the person interprets it based on their life. Mm. Life on break. Right, so I'm good with somebody being direct, straightforward. You know what I'm saying? Of course, she, she's not. Okay. It's more you got to put some 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 fluff around it. If mm. you fluff me, it's like get to the point. Like I'm, I grew up very straightforward. Yep. Tell it to me like it is. Yep. Learning that, um, how we interpret things. So we have th therapy, but you also need a relationship coach. Mm. Um, our coach, our coaches and friends um, D and me, they got a thing called Lovepreneur. Okay. They saved us from breaking up in the beginning. My wife don't come from an entrepreneur background at all. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't understand, why are we working on a Saturday? And I'm like, but mm -hmm. sometimes we we wake up and just fly to Miami on a Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's understanding the dynamics of what it takes. So they helped her and helped me understand her, her understand me. So I think everybody needs a friendship circle that is in relationships, yes. a coach, and either individual therapy or, or a couples therapy. Mm, yeah. That's amazing. Okay. <clears throat> Last question about marriage. Do you feel as though, well, I think you kind of already answered it. Do you feel as though marriage brings you more focus, peace, stability, and success? Yes. Do you feel like you would be a greater person by being married versus being single? With the right person. Mm. The greatest decision the greatest decision you ever make in your life is not the car you drive or where you live, it's who you decide to say I do to. Mm. Amen. That, that person could build could help you build a skyscraper or could be a wrecking ball to tear it down in a day. Right. So if you know, if and it's hard for men, if I can say this. Mm -hmm. Most men we all, like being included, we don't typically test fidelity if we can be faithful until we're married. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't know until you get married. I think that before you say I do, you should try out being faithful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> try out saying no to what you want. Because mm -hmm. that's what you're going to need. You're mm -hmm. going to need to strengthen that muscle. Okay. To be able to not get what you need and know that you can't force a person to be anything and not go get it somewhere else. Mm. That's amazing, brother. Well, look, <clears throat> man, I appreciate all the knowledge you done dropped today. Man, now, vice versa. If there's any advice, if there's anyone out there that's wanting to be like you, looking up to you and, like, they just intrigued by what you're saying today, what type of advice can you give a college kid or a high school kid yeah. or even someone that's in their 30s to get on the right path and become a successful individual like yourself? Man, well... I'm still climbing, bro. I would I would say even that, an awareness to know that that you're not where you where you were, mm -hmm. but you're not where you're going. Right? That's humility. Mm -hmm. I ain't arrived. Mm -hmm. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, you can't you can't become. My one of my mentors says this: you can't become your best self by yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. So my mentor says that. Wow. Right? So that I like that. If I'm gonna be anything at all, I need to find a person who's already that. Wow. Wow. Learn from them, ask them questions, be humble enough to say, I don't know. Yeah. I've got to build relationships with people like yourself that I feel comfortable in my intellect, what I know, but I also should feel comfortable in my ignorance and say, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. The ability to be able to show up as who you are and not dumb down or shrink, but be able to trust somebody with your ignorance and say, bro, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. hey, I need help. How do mm -hmm. I do this? How do I build this? So like now this year, I'm trying to be more intentional to acquire two new skills over a five-year period. So over the next five years, I want to learn the stock market. Mm -hmm. I have money in the stock market, but I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. I just throw money in it, right? And my friends will take me to invest in that. Mm -hmm. Over a five-year period, I'm trusting people with my ignorance. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. Teach me this. Mm -hmm. So that that's the path to success. Mm. Y'all heard it first. From my man, Marcus Rozier, one of the best that ever done it. Man, this was very positive, very influential. I appreciate you coming on Man, the show and blessing it. us. And the fans out there, maybe that conversation, so he already told you how to find him. Marcus Anything Wild, else you want to leave the people? Marcus Y. Rosier. Man, y'all tell Trey, come pick me up again in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, brother. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Maybach Conversations over and out.